Uh, so I'm sharing with you um, uh, what I find through the scriptures and by the Spirit uh, 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 what it is to be a real person, a, 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 a completed person. And I wouldn't share if it wasn't what I'm, by the grace of God, uh, uh, know myself. Um, and knowing is inside you. Because we are, we are, we're, uh, we're spirits. Jesus said God's a spirit. Spirit's the person, therefore the person in the universe is a spirit. A spirit of knower, the lover, and a chooser. That's all we are, as he fathered our spirits. He created our souls and bodies. Our souls are a means of expressing ourselves. And our bodies express ourselves. We are spirit. He's spirit. We're spirit. That's why you, that's why you have united him. Like father, like son. Things aren't spirits. We are. Spirits are knower. Paul said, what man knows the things of man, except the spirit of marriage is. So knower, you, knower is you. I know, I know, I know. That's you. You operate because you know. You're comfortable in this room because you're in a room. You live by knowing and you live by desiring. A love all, all life, of course, it teems with desire from the atomic power upwards. Everything is a, a mass of, of desire, which is love. It depends what way the way love goes. We want to, sati we want to satisfy or satisfy others, love. So a person comprised of knowing and loving and then choosing. Choosing is what we nowadays, nowadays call faith, or the Bible calls faith, mm -hmm. putting yourself in something. Faith isn't theorizing about something, it's committing yourself to something. Now that's how you came here tonight, or this afternoon. You knew you could come. You desired to come, you may be a little regretful little later on, but at least you started desiring to come. So you know you could come, you could have, I'll come. That's a person. And your car or your feet only bought the I come here. The I come is you. The I am is you. Now it's, it's expressed through your emotions, that's your soul. Expressed through your reason, your rational faculty, that's your soul. Expressed through your body. But you are the knower, the desirer, and the chooser which, which puts you in something, which is the faith. That's all you are. That's all God is, that's all man is. And that's how we operate. That's, and, uh, and therefore, to be a person is to know who I am, and then function as who I am. Now, of course, what the Bible teaches us, uh, a, a, a real I am is a, a union of the I am and my I am. Oh, it's a union. The Bible says, he, as he's joined to the Lord, is one spirit. One, not two. That's in 1 Corinthians 6.17. Uh, your spirit, get spirit, isn't a kind of spook, it's a person. Because he's a spirit. Jesus said, God is spirit. So the person in the universe, all this is product of the person, isn't it? It must, in the beginning, he, it's all come out from him. It's manifestations of him in variety of forms. You can't see him in a thing. You can see a form of him in a thing. Everything is marvelous. You can see him in a person. That's why he has persons. He can reproduce himself in persons, because he's a person. So we're spirits as he is. Everything expresses him, manifests his glory, and, and you can see him. I see through everything. You see his wonder, glory, beauty, everything. But that's not he. <laughs> persons is a form of him. And the Bible says he, we humans, sinners saved by grace, joined the Lord. So a real person is a person who's a person. He's really God as a person. And he knows he isn't really he. He's really the living God uh, and he's expressing the living God. He's the real person in him, is the living God, and he's, he's expressing the living God. That's, that's big talk. That's what the Bible says. So I'm talking about uh, uh, how to find out uh, who we are. I find out who we are through the book, but the book must be interpreted by the Spirit. The book's no good outside you. It's got to come inside you. Oh, that's what I know. It's got to come out. That's why Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they're Spirit. Spirit's inside you. So they dissolve from being the book and become you. Oh, that's it. That's I. Now, I, I take it. I'm speaking to those who've begun that relationship. I can't say to the audience this size, but I must take it you're born again. That's a, that, 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 that's a fundamental matter. And if you're born again, it means you knew you were wrong. That was a very great thing. You are not a right person, you are a wrong person. And the Spirit of God operated on you through the law and through the gospel until you say, I'm a wrong person. So wrong, I'm under a curse, I'm under condemnation, I'm going to hell, I'm lost. And yeah, that, that made you most of you dissatisfied with yourself. And was there a way out? Uh, uh, um, could you, could you, uh, could you be back to God? Could you get right with God? Could you go to heaven instead of hell? Could you be forgiven? Uh, uh, could you have eternal life and so on? You became dissatisfied with yourself. Uh, and you found outside you, in a book, 
certain things were said. You can't live by an outside book. It's got to come inside you. And the outside book told you about God loved like this, and he loved so much his own person, his own son. He came and, and, and himself took upon what uh, him, what you come to us, took our sins on him, went to death, went to hell on our behalf, where we can go, and rose, from the, rose again to, 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 to wipe out that condemnation and that guilt and that wrath and that destiny in hell. That's outside you. But because you've become dissatisfied enough, if you've been so born again, you've been a dissatisfied person before you're a satisfied person. Dissatisfied with the old life where you tried to be satisfied. And you're dissatisfied. Could I be satisfied? I want peace. I want forgiveness. I want to get rid of those wrong things in my life. I want power. I want uh, 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 God. I want heaven. I want hope and so on. You want, I want. You can't live by wanting. You live by having. I'm not a, I'm not a wanter. I'm a haver. I'm an iser. Life isn't getting. It's a being. That's the secret. It isn't a getting. It's a being. When you're a getter, you haven't got there yet. When you're a beer, you have got there. A beer, but an iser. Now, you, you were a wanter then. But I hope you're not on that level, not a, a wanter now. But what happened was this, because you're a free person. Now, this is a great thing. God showed me God's free. He only re-expresses it by freedom, you see. Be persons that re-express God. People to see the living God uh, through persons. So, uh, 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 therefore, we must be free, because a person's free. Um, and so, uh, in our freedom, we make our choices. And therefore, if you're born again, there came a moment when, knowing first, by the, with, with, with the witness of God, your, your disillusioned condition, God's condition, hearing about this, you can't think about what you hear, it's got to be inside you, hearing about it, and being attracted by it, God loved like that, and it says Jesus died like that, and it says he rose again, and is alive now, and that all this past is wiped out, and you mean enter the family of God, and have eternal life, and God becomes your father, and Jesus just said, you hear that, now you're a free person, you chose. Choose, choose means, you said, all right, Lord, I, I, what it means, I'll take that as fact. It's the obedience of faith. See, obedience isn't going a lot, doing a lot of things. Obedience isn't praying more, reading more, it's, it's, obedience, it's believing more. The, the Bible word is it's a word uh, Paul used in the first chapter of Romans, the last chapter of Romans, that's his great letter. First chapter says, unto the obedience of faith. The last uh, the chapter, last verse, almost, says the obedience of faith. What? Obe uh, obey, obey, what's faith? Believe what God says. Believe, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Believe what God says. How do you believe? All right, you're an inside person. That believing is your will. All right, I'll do it. You don't do anything. But inside say, okay, I'll believe that. I know what it means. But he says that he died and he's arisen. He, he's alive. I, I, I can't see him. But I, I take a big leap. I'm going to believe him. I believe he did die. did rise. I go to accept him and believe, and, and, and he becomes my saviour, and I believe him, my sins are just being washed out, and I shall find him alive, I'm a child of God, in the family of God, and so on. Uh, and if you're born again, you did that. And, and uh, 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 then you had the, 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 the first experience uh, of, the, of the true product of faith. See, uh, everything's done by faith, because faith is choice. But on earth, you, you fulfill your own choices. The Bible word on faith is, faith, uh, that, uh, 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 faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's Hebrews 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I think hope for isn't substantial to you. It's, it's insubstantial. Where is it? I hope for it. Hope for it. Faith makes it fact to you. Faith makes a, a, a hope for thing a fact to you. Faith gives substance. Uh, now, you always do that. Uh, um, I couldn't prove this chair would hold me. Until I put faith, I had to commit myself to it. Looking at it, it didn't move, uh, uh, it to me. I, I, I said, what's happened? It holds me. Faith comes down. I'm not holding up the chair, it's holding up me. So you put your faith in something, it comes back and says it's real to you. A human, you do it with your hands. Here's food, all right. You say, that's good food, I desire it, I'll take it. Now, humanly, you take it. Then it takes you. It, 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 it takes a stuff and you have to have the out, out of the sense or whatever necessary, you put things right inside. See, faith always is the thing you take takes you. And in, in our earth, you probably do it with your car. You, you, you take coming here, and here you are. You take food, where your food, here it is. Take chair. So it's all faith is operating, uh, f uh, moving into something available, because it's there, and you desire it. As you move into it, it, it becomes uh, a, a fact to you. Now, if you're born again, you moved into the real substance of faith, which is you, you, you took a person you can't see. On the basis of God's word, a person risen again, you see, what happens? You received you. 
If you're born again, the Spirit came back to you and says, Yes, He is your Savior. God is your Father. You are forgiven. And that's come into your peace. Well, I don't know how, but Jesus is my Savior. God is my Father. I'm a member of His family. Uh, and what is uh, still more wonderful, really, uh, is, is you, you couldn't help but gain love. The Bible says when you're born again, just Romans, Romans 5, when you have peace with God, peace is it's set it's selfish in a way. Oh, thank, that, that fear's gone. Those sins are gone. That, that judgment and hell is gone. I've got peace with God. That's wonderful. But that's just a personal matter. But then the Bible goes on to say, when, 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 the, when, the, when the Spirit of God makes it real to you with Jesus, that Jesus is your Savior, the love of God is shed upon your hearts. That's Romans 5, 5. The, the, by the Holy Ghost, not your love. Love of God is given you by the Holy Ghost. Love of God is shed upon your heart by the Holy Ghost who is given unto you. And you begin to love. Now that's when you really begin to be a, a new person. You've begun to be an expression of God. See, God is love. And when you're born again, you think you love him. When I first, at 18 years of age, took Jesus, uh, well, he'd been no interest to me before. I was more interested in football than Jesus Christ. He said, I was a lost sinner. And then I went to him as a lost sinner. Oh, that's why he died for me. I fell in love. Oh, he shed his blood to save me from hell. I fell in love. That wasn't my love. Really. That's his spirit of love began to live in me. That, that God began to live my life, you see. That's, I didn't know it then. The spirit of God, whose spirit of God, love, began to operate in me and express his other love. That's the first time I love, I love somebody else more than myself. If you're born again, you begin, love, you begin to love somebody else more than yourself. That is Jesus Christ and Father and other people. This is new birth. So I'm talking to you, uh, that you are uh, taking you already have a member of the, of the, of the, the, the spirit family. And spirit is more real to you than, than, than the matter. You now say, oh, this is just passing stuff. It's temple. It's just made of a bunch of atoms that run about and disappear again. There's nothing much to it. Uh, things are not seen in eternal. I'm talking to you, I'm taking you, you know, the eternal is the living God, the living Son, the living Spirit, and you, and you, and you. And you're part of a living person. And these things just fiddly little things came out from him. That's why you've got faith, you get more. If you've got faith in him, you, you get a broken chair, you get a new chair. Because you take from the universe, he's, he, he's the universe of person, is an in, 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 invisible person, part of the Son's Spirit. You're part of him now. In, you've been made a member of his family. So, uh, Spirit, and Jesus and God, a uh, Father, are more real to you than these things. You begin to operate faith on this level. And the first, first step of faith you took was that one, when you'd use your faith to get your food and get your chair and get so-and-so and get things, and then got yourself. This time in your need, you couldn't get Jesus Christ. He was out, out to you. By faith, you said, I'll take you. And then the Spirit came back, and in fact, he said, yes, he's taken you. Yes, he has got, he, he, he is your Savior. You, uh, you do belong, you are safe in him. You have the Heavenly Father and so on. I'm talking to you as such. Now I'm talking to you about those, you have got that, yet you can't say you're totally satisfied. You can't say you can handle all life. See, this life is not being handled by life, it's handling life. You're not, not life on top of you, you're on top of it. This life is, isn't sinking in the waters, it's walking on the waters. This life is gaiety and complete. When you've got what you want, your life's fun to me. I live by fun. If I didn't find fun in Christianity, I'd try atheism instead. I like fun. Uh, fun to, oh, that's it, that's it. So life isn't, it's, oh, that's it. Now, uh, uh, I'm sort of saying to you, uh, uh, you probably wouldn't be here, I uh, take you for born again, maybe you are, you can't say you're wholly satisfied. You can't say you've got all the victory you fear ought to have, all the peace, uh, uh, and uh, all, all the full meaning of life you ought to have. There's something that isn't quite in, in focus yet. Now that's what I'm talking about these days. Now, uh, as we go on, you'll find the reason is, if uh, you have a relationship to outside Christ, and you haven't yet had it replaced by a relationship to an inside Christ. See, when you're saved, you're a lost person, hear your sins. Well, you read about Jesus Christ, he, he, there he was, he died, he rose again, you see him up there with the Father in, in heaven and the Holy Spirit, and you're related to an outside Christ, well, he's your Savior, hopefully more than he's your Lord, your Father, but it's this kind of relationship. You don't live by this kind of relationship, you live by this kind of relationship, you live by being, not by, by coming. You don't live by keeping getting something. You live by something that got you and you live it. It's you, it's you, it's you. You live by being yourself. 
It's the same principle as how you get a profession. You, you work a profession to get you. You don't operate your profession by getting it, do you? Uh, if you're a nurse, or, uh, or a teacher, or a doctor, or a cook, uh, you decide, it got you, oh, I know my medicine, I know my carpentry, I know my cooking, I know my teaching. Somebody's got you, now, oh, that's fine, I like to do my carpentry, I know my stuff. You operate your stuff. Oh, I like to cook, I know my cooking. Your poor husband may be, but I hope you do anyhow. You know, you're going, oh, I like to do medicine. Because somebody's got you, it's part of you, and you operate it. That's what humans are. That's something that gets you, I'll you. Now, I got that language. Well, uh, I remember the struggle I had when I first had Bengala language. Oh, a lot of sounds. I shall never get them, you know, kind of gibberish. I, uh, but I must get it. Faith must get it, because I had to get the, the, I get the people, but I had to know the language to get to them. I remember the day, not so long, it wasn't a difficult language. Maybe after some month, I, I began to talk, and it got me. Now, that's years ago, I could waste your time talking to the language. That's part of me. Now, which is it, the language or me? The language has got me inside, and I can talk Bengala. I talk it, which is the eye of the language. You see, all life is being caught up by something, and you operate it. See, that's what it is. Now, uh, the real truth of being a person is you're caught up by God, and God lives in you, and you operate it. And you're expressing God. You're expressing his nature, expressing his love, expressing himself. And you have an inner consciousness, I'm not I, I'm Christ. In me, operating by me. Like, I'm not, uh, that language is part of me, I speak it, it's inside me, I operate the language. You've got your pressure, you've got carpentry, I operate carpentry. You've got cooking, you operate cooking. Which is it? You are the cooking. <laughs> Which is it, you see? So humans are made, so we are, are, we're managing and expressing something which isn't, it is us, but it's not us. And, and faith is the thing by which it can get you, a profession gets you. Now we're talking about the profession, because the we humans are made, but the living, uh, the, 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 the person in the universe, the person who's all of all the wisdom, all the power, all the, is really you and you know him. And he lives in you, and you live, and it isn't, it isn't really you living, and you speak, it isn't really you speak. It's really he, and yet it's you. And you, of course, when you've got him, you've got that whole lot. If you've got him, you've got all the power, you've got all the wisdom, you've got all the peace, you've got all, all the, the necessity for life. You're complete. Complete in him. But to be complete in him is because he's complete in you. And then you, you express it. Now that's what we're talking about. I saw it in, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Paul's great word in Colossians. Well, I found he had two ministries. It struck me as a young man. Uh, in, if you read Tosh, he says, I have a ministry first to take the gospel to the world. Now, like uh, through the scriptures, to take, that's where I spent my life doing that. Take the gospel to the world. Take the saving Lord Jesus Christ to the world and come to us. Now, he said, I do that. Then he went on. He says, but I have a second ministry. He said, a second ministry, he said, uh, he said that is to fulfill the word of God, to, 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 to fulfill it. It's as if you get part of it in the gospel, now to fulfill it. So you read it. He says, my first ministry is, I take the gospel of the world. Then I have a second ministry, and he says, it's costly, it's me to do it. Uh, to the church, which is his body, he says. And that's it to fulfill the word of God. As if part of it was the gospel, now this is the fullness. And then he said, what is the fullness? And he says, the fullness is, is uh, uh, in one simple term, uh, term Christ in you, the whole glory. Well, you know, see, if you have a total Christ in you, uh, there's not much room anything else left. <laughs> Christ in you, you're, there's not much of you left, because he, he's pretty big. Christ in you, Christ in, not Christ for you, Christ in you. And Paul said, this is a hidden, a hidden mystery. He said, the riches of the glory, riches, because of course it's everything, you've got Christ, you've got everything. The glory, you can't have more than the, per God, the perfect God living in you and expressing himself by you, you being amazed by other people can, uh, can find him as, as you found him. You can't have more than that. It's the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you. And he went on saying, uh, he went on uh, in that scripture, warning every man, teaching men, every man, that he may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So it is completion. Perfection is completion. I'm here to present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Now I saw that years ago. Uh, at, at that time, you see, it wasn't real to me. That's why I had to find that. I knew Christ for me. I knew Christ as my Lord. But to say he lived permanently in me, in the real way, what lives in you is really what you are. Like your profession lives in you, it's what you really are. Now, if, if, if he lives in me, then what, 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 what I really am is he. I'm just a means which this person is operating. I didn't know that. 
I didn't know that Christ in you in that sense. I went to, to Africa and I was taking Jesus Christ to the Africans as I told you. Now I knew about taking Jesus Christ to the Africans but then I found a scripture, another scripture which got me, started me on this pursuit as you might say. But of course uh, when you pursue the things that God you find them, it isn't pursuing and not finding, it's pursuing and finding, it really finds you of course. Uh, and here, what I found in the scripture in Galatians 4.19 where Paul spoke about converts. My this children, for my travel in birth uh, again until Christ be formed, until that travel in birth to Christ be formed in you. Oh, I said, that's different. It's as if he lived kind of, talk, was talking kind of baby, uh, em embryo language, birth language, travel in birth. It's as if an embryo Christ became a fully formed Christ in you. Oh, I said, that's different. If Christ is a fully formed Christ in person, I say, that's not much different for that person except as a means of expressing Christ. I don't know that, I said. I said, I've not even been that to Africa. I've been bringing Christ to the Africans, hoping they may get a thing called eternal life. But this is making a new kind of person. See, I found the whole purpose of God is to give us a thing called eternal love. It's to, it's to be, that we should be expressive of eternal love, which is himself, and he's been re-expressing his eternal quality of life by us. I didn't understand that at that time. Formed in me. Especially some of didn't understand that. I, I, I noticed it too. We had a, we had a leader at that time, my, a man who fired our mission a great soldier of Jesus called C.C. Studd. He had this free way of saying things. We were very few in those days, only eight or ten of us, and had this huge Detroit forest, about a thousand miles of it. And then there were villages all around the forest. We'd go out in the villages and meet them, then we'd come, come together, of course, and have fellowship and pray together. And when we were together, he had a way of saying things sometimes. And one thing, thing we would say was this. He said, Lord, I'm out here to see Jesus Christ running about inside black bodies. Well, said, that's, that's one way of putting it. See, not Jesus Christ come running about in, that's the same thing. If Jesus Christ is running about in you, then that's all there is. He, your, your black body, your white body is showing him running about in you, that's all. Say, my dear. Now, I had to get some things through the scripture into me in focus to get this, to get this, to get this in focus. Uh, uh, the first consequence was, like me, I didn't feel I had all I wanted to. Now, I'm talking to you like that. If you feel what you've got, if you've got all you want, I'm all right, God bless you. I, you, you better go to sleep. You had everything here this afternoon. If you don't feel you've got all you want to, then I'm talking, if you feel you're forgiven, accept it, but you've got all you want with power, peace, fixing of peace, and satisfaction, so that all the bells ring. Uh, joy unspeakable and peace apart. You can't say, no, that, then I can talk to you, because I was like that. So then I was in Africa, but I felt I needed to be made better. I felt I needed a much greater quality of love to identify myself with these simple Africans in their villages. I felt I needed power. Something could happen when I took Jesus to them. It wasn't like a bouncing a ball against the wall and bouncing back at you. I felt I needed faith that something could happen. They seemed so dark, because we're all dark, we know each other, but it seemed so dark. And then contentions with fellow missionaries and, and, and judgmentalism and negativism and test, question of, of temptation of the flesh. I was a common human. So I said, I'm not the, I, I, the adequate person I ought to be. I'm not the uh, adequate representative of Jesus Christ I ought to be to the people. I'm partial. I'm not quite satisfied. I have tensions and fears and difficulties. I am not handling. So I thought I needed more. Not only the Africans needed more, I needed more. So I set out on a search. I search, I, I told you, an inward person, I didn't mean out of search. I mean, all we missions, of course, tired of early morning time with the time with God. We lived in bamboo mud huts like an African. In the early morning, we'd have our time with God alone, where we read the Bible and, uh, and uh, pray and commit. That's why I talk about uh, uh, time of search. Now, in those times, I'd say, God, God, give me more. Make me more loving. Make me more powerful. Make me more victorious. More released. Make me a better kind of person. Now, I didn't know I made it, that I was under big illusion. I didn't understand some illusion then. I thought I could be improved. I find the human self can never be improved. Oh, I didn't know that one. I'll tell you why I knew that. I didn't know that then. I thought, he must improve me. I must have more, I must have more victory, I must have, I must have, I must have all this stuff. So, in my quiet time, of course, I'd be taking it to him. And then one day, he startled me with a very simple word, well, uh, as I say, the Bible comes out from the Bible and the Spirit makes it real to you. It comes, it comes alive to you. I took a very simple word from Scripture and made it alive to me. The word was, God is love. Well, we all know that, don't we? Three words, God is love. But when the, it's in the book. When the Spirit takes it, it makes it real. And what it meant to me is, oh, if God is love, he loves a person. It doesn't say God has love. I thought that was a power that God had and put in me and here I'd be loving. 
son, they said, God is love. And I said, love, universal love, universal, everything, atoms love each other, insects love each other, life's full of desire, love, desire, whatever form it takes, maybe itself or whatever form, love. He is love. So I said, love's a person. I said, he's a universal person. Because uh, uh, so I had to get a new, idea, a new concept of God, not just, not just a person up there. He's both individual and universal. That's both there, but he loves uh, uh, everywhere. But it's a person, a person, a person. It's a difficult to say to me, love isn't a thing I give you, because love isn't a thing. I am that love. Wasn't my name always I am? I say in Moses' days. I am, I am, not I have. Well, I said, sitting in my hut anywhere, if I was selfish of you, you got the lot and gone left, left none for me. You're the lot and poor me, what about poor me? I need some love too. You know the way you talk, uh, just between yourselves, I went to God, I needed power, and I found another scripture came to me. In one Corinthians 1, now Christ is the power, not has it. Christ is the power. Power is a person. Well, power is very universal. It had atomic power, power is universal. Christ is the power. So power is a person. So I began to get a new fact that God's a universal person. Now it's very difficult to see, first of all, because we're so used to seeing, uh, because we got separated through the fall, that God's up there. Well, he is up there. He's, uh, it says he's uh, uh, um, above all and through all and in you. That's what the phrase is used of God. He's above all and through all and in all. So I've got to begin to find a God whose who spirit, who's not just a person sitting in the throne up there or out there, he's uh, somehow God's got to He's in the universe. He is, he is, and you find him anywhere, everywhere. He's there, he's there. He's the love, he's the power. But you see, the problem it meant to be was, I thought I had the power. I must have the power. I must have the faith. I must have the victory. I must have it. And it seems if he's still the, still the lot and none, left none for me. That was my, this gap. Of course, he was teaching me something about that. So there I was. I learned this. Uh, he is love. He is power. God is my peace. He doesn't have peace. God is my peace. God is, the Bible says, God is my exceeding joy. God is my joy. It's not a thing. God is the joy. God is the peace. Uh, and then I finally find the scripture, which fits a whole lot together. The first scripture, in the beginning God, that's all there is then. In the beginning God, that's Genesis 1. And where at the end, when the end comes, and it says, the last time he's been destroyed is death. This is in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, the thing finishes. What does it say? It says, Jesus Christ, the Son, the Son should render up the kingdom of the Father, that God may be all in all. Well, what more? If he's all, he isn't some. If he's all in all, he is all in all his forms. So actually, that's true now, you see it. Everything's really a form of him. It may be a created outer form, or maybe a person who can express him. All in all, isn't that a statement? Not some in all. All in all, that it is. And when you have eyes, the spiritual eyes, you say, the world can't see that, because of course the world's got to be all messed up. But we can see it. So I got statements like that. Now I had to move on. I, you, by the way, I, 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 I'm told I have an hour. You better see signals from the darkness at me. <laughs> Let me know. I can't tell when the hour comes. Pardon? I, I, I'm half a deaf, I didn't get that. You can come and signal to me when I will stop. Wherever you are, I can't see it. <laughs> Thank you. Now, now I want to move on from him, that self, to this self. I'm a self. I must, I'm a self. You're a self. I must be satisfied self. I must be a living self. It's in the good uh, he being a self. What about me as a self? So I've begun to get the thick concept of himself as a total self. Yeah, but what about me? What, what's that relation between him and me? So he now turns my, my attention, his attention to me, and this is why I had, had to begin to learn a new thing. At that time, it, um, a little scripture came to him, another scripture, Colossians 3 verse 11. It says, the scripture says to the believer, now Christ is all, not has, is all, and in all. Christ is all, and in all. Well, I began to get a little glimpse, Christ is all, power and love. I suddenly said, in all, oh, I see. It doesn't mean I normal God become something. It means I contain him in all. If he's in me, if he's in me, then all is in me. It isn't that it hasn't become me. It means the all is he in me. And I'm a me containing he. Containing him. Oh, I said that's different. 
That isn't I becoming a better kind of this self becoming something. It's self self containing the somebody who is the uh, is the whole thing. But of course, you only live by, by what you know is inside you. It must be an inner reality to me that the real person living here is not I, but Christ, and I'm just a means which he he operates. The, the, you have to know a thing inside you. That's why I taught you as you're born again. If you're born again, you know Jesus. That's why I've not anything to say to you to really this evening if you, if you don't born again. What I say would be is nonsense to you. If you have stepped in by faith, received him by faith, and faith brings bring substance, and he's come back and you have consciousness somehow Jesus is your Savior, and that love of God is in your heart, then I can talk to you. Because uh, then you can, you can uh, uh, get a little glimpse of what I mean, he this, uh, 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 can give me the all in me. Christ is all and in all. But now, what, what, I had to, what I had to proceed from that, I had to have a, a new understanding of the human self, and that's our trouble. Your trouble isn't Christ, it's you. If you're born again, he isn't a trouble, but you're the trouble. It isn't how he fits with you, it's how you fit with him is the trouble, or don't fit. That's the trouble. So self's the problem. His self isn't a problem, because we they have him, at least by faith, see what he is. I'm, the, I'm a problem, because I'm so so uh, 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 changeable, variable, and seem to feel so much about which is a failure and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and defeat and so on. I'm the problem. So this is I had to be solved myself. Now, do you want to begin to say to me? Find out who you are. All you are is a container. At that time, Christ is all that in all. And then to, the first illustration he gave me at that time from the Bible was where three times over the New Testament we call vessels. Well, that's just not that old-fashioned word for a pot or a cup. He says, all you are is the cup, you're not what you contain. It can be uh, illustrated again, you a cup of coffee. Or if you're, if, you're, if you're a good British, you like tea, a cup of tea. But the point is, it isn't the cup is the means of containing the tea. The important thing is not the cup. It isn't the carriage of the cup. Of the, of, the, of, the, of the liquid. What liquid is, does it make available to you? It's a means of which the liquid's available. All you are is a means of which God's available. You're a vessel. And I noticed this. That the Bible said you could have a, you could have an alternative liquid. Where it said left vessel. I saw Romans 9 says you could be a vessel that contains wrath. I think you say wrath, but you can't get you on know, what I mean wrath, I say. A uh, vessel that contains wrath or a vessel that contains mercy. Well, wrath is a part of Satan. Mercy is part of Jesus Christ. So either I'm a vessel that's containing the spirit, Satan's spirit, which beauty is wrong, or I'm a vessel that contains Jesus Christ, a spirit, God, Jesus' spirit, which contains mercy. I'm a vessel, but who, which is in the vessel? And do you know what I began to find? I began to find it all wrong. Humans never had a nature of their own. Humans never had a nature of their own. Uh, humans are marvelously made. They're real cells, uh, they're real capacities. We have all the, all the quantities, like, like a computer, the mental capacity. Nature is your, is your quantity. What kind of person you are, that's not a matter. Uh, you're, you're, you've got all your capacity, your emotions, your desires, your appetites. Oh, one that we have God made us wonderfully made. Look what, look what comes out of the brains of man, wonderfully made. Your nature isn't your faculties, your capacities, it's a quality, what kind of person, is, what, what kind of person is, is expressed by you? That's not us. I never knew that. See, I thought, uh, I, this is why I began to get things wrong, I thought I ought to be made a more loving person. That, no, the quality isn't me. The quality is the God in me. I ought to be more powerful. The power isn't me. The capacities, by the power can express itself through me. But the, the power, the power, the quality is his. The peace that it is. That, so the, the, uh, I began to find the Bible says humans never had a nature. I, I got the illustration together. I found where the Bible says I've got vessel. Well, we all know John 15 if we're people of God. That's the, that's the vine branch chapter. I am the vine. I am the true vine. You are the branches. I know it's the true. It means it's a false one. But the point is, a branch isn't the nature, is it? It's not the nature of the branch. The branch is the agency in which the vine expresses its nature. It gets its fruit through. It's a branch is the means by which the, the vine reproduces itself. And there Jesus says, you can be one of two vines. You can either be a false vine and produce the wrong fruits, the Satan vine, or you can be Jesus Christ's vine and produce the right fruits. Then I found temples. In the old days when God hadn't knew, we didn't know our body was a temple, he made temples like tabernacles. 
Now the point wasn't the, co- wasn't the, 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 the quantity of the tabernacle. It wasn't, is it a magnificent, our false pride can make a magnificent church building. That's not the point. It's the quality of the deity expressed through the temple, which God showed in that temple. It's the temple of Satan. It's the temple of Christ. That's what matters. It isn't the nature of the temple. It's the nature of the, of the person who is, who is manifested and glorified in that temple. And then today the Bible says, oh, that was old. this is your temple. Which is it? Are you a temple? Your temple of the Holy Spirit? Or which spirit are you? Are you express a, a, a temple of the spirit of Christ? or temporary face is created in error, Satan. So one by one, I, I began to find a new thing to me. You're quite right. It isn't that humans have a nature. Humans don't change. Humans are a container, something like a computer. Now a computer has great capacities, but it only, it only expresses its programmer. It doesn't, comp- it didn't, it, it, it's the stuff it expresses, it is programmer stuff. And it can develop, it may be. It isn't its stuff. It has to be programmed, it can only express what it's programmed. Now that's what we are again. We like magnificent computers, they're great development, we're persons, great development. Have a mind and a body itself. But 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 actually we express we express the nature of the God in us. And then I find that's of course what we're made to made to be. Uh, that's that's uh, the, uh, the, the simplest evidence of that is there's been one perfect man who came as a man, Jesus Christ. He gave up his Godhead to become a man. He was son of man. He was number one man. He's our brother, he's a brother. It's very marvelous. He's the first born man in brethren, the Lord Jesus Christ. So in order to go through and, and, and win the battle, he had to, for as us, he had to be one of us, and then take his sins, to, as a man, take, us, take his sins upon us and bear our sins and so on. Now I find, what did Jesus Christ say as a man? Tremendous self. He said, I am the way, I am the light, I am the truth, I am the door. Look inside him. Oh, I don't do anything by myself. I only do what I see the Father do. And I don't express any views of my own, and I hear I judge. Well, where is this person who is doing the Father's uh, will? And then in, in the supper table, when the Spirit was going to come out of him back into us, he was going to die and rise and the Pentecost come back into us, he then said to the disciples, and he said he's going, and they thought the Father's up here somewhere. In my Father's had many, South Father's had many mansions. And so one of them said, Father, Jesus, you say you're going to the Father, won't you show him to us before you go? You talk too much of your Father. We are leaving us like orphans. Can't you show him to us? Yes, he said. If you see me, you see the Father. He wasn't the Father, he's the Son. Common carpet to walk in about. He said, if you see me, you see the Father. He says, you see, a human expresses God. Now, I'm, I, I'm the human, I'm number one human, and he never, Satan never got him, so Satan never got inside him. For 40 days, te- Satan tried to get inside him with my temptation. Come my way. Get my self-spirit into you. Have your right life run to self, self-ends. Now, uh-huh. God self, gives himself to other people. I'm an expression of a God gives, not, not makes other people die for me. I die for them. That's me. So he said, I'm always, you see me, you see the Father. Do you see, therefore, when people see us, they see Christ, they see the Father, they see that's the Son. Our life is a common life when we know who we are, actually we're expressors of the, the, the deity expressed by to us. All right, but then I found this. I said all along, yes, but that's an alternative deity. There's an alternative God. Because I must be free. A person must be free. Communism shows us that. Bondage, where there's... Where there's uh, uh, put upon you be free we f- free therefore as humans we had to be free to make a choice uh, and the great choice a human can make because uh, it's a choice God made uh, shall I be a self for myself self loving self getting self gratifying self or shall I be a self for you shall I find satisfaction getting all I can for myself and to hell with you or shall I find my satisfaction getting, getting anything for you and going to hell for you oh which way and I saw Jesus, God himself settled that. I found the scripture was said of God, the original God, in the beginning, he cannot lie. Now a liar is an expression of self-getting self. A liar gets his own ends. When he says God cannot lie, what it taught me? He showed me that number one person in the universe could have been a self for himself. It was just for his own advantage to hell with the rest of us. But there I saw what the Trinity is. I saw that number one person, instead of saying just for myself, I, that's my, I bring my son to be. I love my son. I'll be a lover. 
I start a love relationship, father son. Now, for father son, become the whole family later on. It'll be, I'm going to be a lover person, not a, not a self getter. Uh, uh, my self love will be in self giving, not my self love in self getting. So, you see, every person has to, uh, and your person like God, that has to be settled with you. Now, you see, there's coming to be, right in eternity, somewhere in heaven, a false God, a person who was free, apparently the person most created near the throne of God in those days called Lucifer. Lucifer meant he was to bear light. He was to bear showing God. Self for others. No, he said. You really saw it? No. I've got full of beauty, full of power. I'll be for myself. I'll run my own life. I'll, I'll be my own God. So he, he brought it to being a false kingdom. That's why he's God of it. A self-loving self. He's the God, the spirit of error, of self-loving self. Self-getting self. Now do you see us in the Garden of Eden? We have to be free, we have to learn our freedom, so we're confronted by the alternatives, by the two trees. Uh, uh, and we are told that if we take the other tree of life, it says, which means the fruit goes into you, you'd have eternal life. Boy, I read that, I said, I know it's only a symbol, because eternal life isn't a fruit, eternal life is Jesus Christ, as our, our brother or lady has said, Jesus Christ. So it symbolized, if you take the right fruit, Jesus Christ comes into you, and he begins to live his quality of life by you. Therefore, if you take the wrong fruit, the spirit of self sadness gets into you. That's what happens. And we were tricked by Satan, and we received that fruit, we received into us this, this spirit of error. Satan uh, 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 came and dwelt in us, uh, and began to express himself in us. Now, I, I, got, I got to get this point, because this is a difficult point. See, um, something happened then which has made a vital difference to us. Uh, until you get this difference, I had to get cleared up. Okay, get to that, we won't get the thing clear. The vital difference is Satan himself is self-deceived. He thinks he runs himself. I'm independent. He's not. He's God's, God's servant. He calls he's made by God. God uses Satan. We'll talk about that tomorrow. God uses Satan and evil for good ends. He used Satan to crucify Jesus so we might get resurrection. So God uses the, the evil person for his own ends. He's God's agent. But Satan doesn't know that. I'm myself. I'm my own God. I'm in my own show. I'm independent. I'm self for self. Now, he, he is a deceiver. The Bible says, as a, in one statement in Revelation 12, which gathers all the names of Satan together, it says, that old serpent called Satan and the devil, it's the only scripture where those three are put together, that old serpent, the God of Eden, called Satan and the devil. That's the, what did he do? He deceived the whole world, it says. Now, deceives means you're tricked. Makes you kids you. Makes you think what you are. Now, he's deceived. He thinks he's independent. Now I want to say this, what he did in the Garden of Eden, he treated, you didn't know he occupied you and expressed himself by you. He made it was yourself. He said, you run your own life. You could, now, he was, a, self, a human never runs his own life. A human is a, is a computer who has a programmer. He's a branch that has a vine. He's a vessel that has a liquid. And the running is the, what kind of liquid? What kind of vine? What kind of programmer? It's, it's the God in you that runs his quality of life through you. Now Satan hid that. Uh, Satan said, you're the one who does it. Uh, uh, you're, you do the bad things, you do the good things. You never did. See, that's how we've been tricked. See, you and I never did good or evil. Uh, you, uh, the, the evil was Satan expressing himself, getting himself through you. The good is Jesus Christ expressing himself, giving himself through you. Now we're free people. Because we're free, we, we cooperate in it. And that's what we We chose to be with Satan. So we are cooperating with him. We, we, we didn't do the sin. Satan, Satan did the sin. Now Jesus saw this. I want to try to explain the importance of it. it was when, it's in chapter 8 of the Gospel of John. Uh, when uh, the Pharisees, the nuns, un unborn again people, were attacking him. That's like we were. We used to be self-righteous Pharisees. Attacking Jesus Christ, refusing him. He suddenly said, here, there are two fathers, not one. Why are we? Two fathers, not one. He says, I do the things I see with my father, you do the things you see with your father. Well, these are indignant Jews, Jews are monotheists. What do you mean? They said, we weren't born in fornication, God's our father. He said, if God had been your father, you'd, you'd known the father of love, you'd known the son. Then he said, underline the scripture in John 8, 44, you of your father the devil, the lust of your father you will do. Now, I thought I did my own lust. No, I didn't know I had a, 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 a deity and he's a self-loving, self-getting, self-gratifying, self-for-self self God in me. 
and he operated several steps by me. So those lusts I have, he's putting his lust through my lust, my, my, my desiring faculty. He puts his hate through my love faculty. He puts his jealousy through my, my jealousy faculty. He takes my faculties, puts his lust, his, they aren't my, they aren't my sins, they're his. Now I cooperate, so I'm stayed with him because I cooperate. But I'm going to cooperate with sin and Satan. Now, you see, I never had a nature. I expressed the nature of this period of error. I found that also from a scripture in 1 John 4, which speaks, I, I forgot it suddenly then. It suddenly says, on the Redeemer, greater is he in you. All right, you're saved. That's what the Holy Spirit in you. But it says this, greater is he in you than he is in the world. Oh, I said, I didn't notice that before. There are two he's then. as a he in the redeemed and a he in the unredeemed. And then two verses later on, John gives them their names. It says, hereby know the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit in the redeemed, and the spirit of error is called the unredeemed. So you see, we've had in us the, the wrong deity, the wrong God, expressing his self-centered lust stuff through us. And we thought it was, he kidded us. That makes you think of us. It was us, it wasn't. We cooperated, so we involved in the scene. And where Satan goes, we go, but for the grace of God. But we're the quarry, we, we, we were uh, the real person doing it was Satan by us. And why is this important? Because, well, now you're saved. If you're saved, your sins are out. You know the sins you did, but you thought were your sins. They were sins, and you cooperate. They were sins. They, they were saying you in hell. In the precious blood of Christ, uh, they went out. And you're here at peace with God because he took your sin by himself, rose again, and all that's cleared. Took away your sins. But. The point isn't the product, it's the producer. It isn't the sin, it's the sinner matter. It's the person doing it. Now your sins came out of a spirit of self-loving self. Every sin has come of self-loving self. Every sin I because, uh, 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 see, self wants his own way. But it's Satan's self wanting his own way by us. We combine Satan's self. Now we didn't know that. Now what's the consequence? Here's our trouble. We come into Christian life, we think, I hear better. Why do I have jealousy? Why do I hate? Why do I lust? Why do I get angry? Why haven't I more peace? Why do I more peace? Aye, 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 aye. As if this should be changed, this is never went wrong. It was never, it was stolen property. It's God's beautiful property, misused it. There was a, always was a beautiful property. Your appetite fact is always beautiful. No way. But it's Satan's self wanting his own way by us. We combine Satan's self. Now we didn't know that. Now what's the consequence? Here's our trouble. We come into Christian life, we think, I should be better. Why do I have jealousy? Why do I hate? Why do I lust? Why do I get angry? Why haven't I more peace? Why do I more peace? Aye, 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 aye. As if this should be changed, this has never went wrong. It was never, it was stolen property. It's God's beautiful property, misused it. There was a, always was a beautiful property. Your appetite was always beautiful. They were misused by Satan. And you thought it was you, he kidded you. He made it think it was you. And then you condemn yourself. There I am jealous again. There I am lusting again. There I am, what's wrong with me? And so we have this false teaching it's got a, it's, if there are two natures, but there are there are no two human natures. There are two divine natures. Ephesians two says when you walked in the old life, according to the course of this world, according to the principal power of the, the old fall, the power there, the spirit was in you. There he is, Satan. In those days, spirit, according to the spirit uh, uh, that, that, that worked in children's disobedience, and where by nature children of wrath, you express the nature of your father, children of wrath. Now when you're saved says Peter, we are partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature, not us, that's Jesus' nature. We never had one. Now you didn't know that. Now you see, that's where we're tangled up. Why did I say, I must have more love? I thought how I must be more loving. I must have more power. I must have more peace. I must be less judgmental. I must have must less conquered by the lust of the flesh. I must be improved. I'm all wrong. You, I'm a beautiful. Uh, only, see, when you don't know who you are, when you don't know that Jesus Christ has taken you over, and he lives in you, and Satan's out. Satan plays his games on you, uh, because you think you should be better. That self effort is Satan. That tries you better is Satan. self effort is Satan. Satan is the God of independent self. And I wish I was so, so. I, that's Satan, because he's got you. self effort means you're in his hands, and he places himself through you. And you can't get out of it. Now, the person who learned that, I put it right, was Paul, in a great chapter called Romans 7, it's a chapter of, uh, it's really where we're, elude, we're in an illusion. Romans 7 says this, Paul says, I'm a new man now. He said, I delight the law of God for the human man. Paul, the old law worker, he got saved. Here he was. I love God now. I want to please God, like when you prayed. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be right. 
I'd like no God. He says that. Now he says, what's wrong with me? He says, I found a commandment which bothered me. If it's an inside commandment, I shouldn't come. Come in, you shouldn't have lust. You shouldn't have inner desires, wrong, wrong desires. He says, the commandment says, I shouldn't have wrong desires. I don't want them. I brought it to Jesus. I'm full of them. Why do I have these wrong desires and lusts when I don't want them? I'm like two people. I'm like a new creature in Christ. Old things, are, new things are away. I've got the power of Christ operating. I know that. And you hear the other old things in me too. Why am I too? And then he saw it. Oh, he says, I see. That wasn't me. That sin dwelling in me. A false invader got into the fall. Called sin or Satan. Sin, just the kind of said this. In me. It's this person expressing his lust by me. Those covetousness I've got wasn't mine at all. He was using my appetite to express his desires. It wasn't me at all. Now he began to say, he says, uh, he began to find liberation. Yeah, I don't go around condemning myself. It's, it's I'm managed by the God in me. Which God? Which God? Which God? Now, this is the final great lesson Paul has. It's all I suppose I can say this afternoon. The final great lesson Paul uh, learned and taught us. He said, I found there's more in the cross of Christ than I thought there was. I've had uh, two operations in the cross of Christ, not one. That's why we have in the Holy Communion the, 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 the cup representing the shed blood and the bread representing the bone by two, not one, body and blood. Why? Because uh, two things happened at Calvary by Christ's shed blood and by his crucified body. Now all of us here know the blood. We know because the shed blood meant he did die in our part, went to hell on our behalf, hell couldn't hold him, rose up again, so our road to hell is closed forever by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, dying and, and rising our bath. That's out. That's taking our sins away. Now Paul says, watch that body. Get a little closer. He says, when you first come to Christ, uh, go here, you're a sinner. You see Christ up there died for you. Praise God, praise God. You, you don't see yourself there. You say, he died for me, praise God. Because he died, I haven't got to go to hell and so on. And you put your trust in that crucified Christ. Now Paul says, come nearer. It's, it, it, it's in the, it's, it best is in the fifth chapter of Second Corinthians. He says, don't you know, if he died for you, he represented you. That body was your body. That body represented all bodies. He, he, he represented you when he hung there. You were there. And so Paul said, don't you, don't you judge? If one died for all, all hung there dead. Now you hang there. Now Paul says, what's the point of your body? It's the agency of containing the spirit. The body, our appetite, in fact, express our self, self inside. Inside you, you've got a deity, a, a false deity. You've got the self of Satan operating by you, inside you, in your fallen condition. You're expressing Satan. All those lusts and things were Satan expressing himself by you. So you, you really were expressor of sin, expressor of Satan. Now he says, watch what, the, what, what uh, that body on the cross, uh, hanging there. And that was your body, your body. And then he made this, this tremendous statement. Uh, in, it's the last verse of that chapter. It says, for God, God made his son to be sin for us who knew the sin. Be sin, made him sin. How can you make Jesus Christ sin? Now, he's, he bore our sins, that's not his sins. His blood, he bore our sins, he made his sins. He bore the penalty, he made his sins. Now, they were his sins. He's made sin. Then he bore our sins, that he died, that's wonderful. But he's made sin. How could you say that boy is sin? Because you expressed sin in Satan. Sin the spirit of sin is the human body expresses the, the spirit in it. And the spirit, it's the sin the spirit you're expressing. So that body expresses sin. So in God's sight, this holy body, representing our body, expresses the spirit of error, which has expressed itself through us. Now what happens when the body dies? Out goes the spirit. When the body dies, out goes the spirit. And you don't bury a body, you bury a spirit, you bury a body. And so that precious body is buried, no spirit. Then Paul said in Romans 6, that's why I say he died to sin. He died for our sins, paid the penalty for our sins out there. Died to sin, but he died in being controlled by sin. Sin is the spirit, it's the sin of Satan, so it's the quality of Satan, the spirit of self and this. He died to this, op being died, is out from him. When your body dies, out of the spirit, that went out. And it said in the resurrection two years later, in came a new spirit. Now in that same body, our body, now has the spirit of Christ in him, no two spirits, no two natures, one nature. Out is the nature, Satan expressing his self-getting nature, self-seeking nature by us. In comes the one who expresses his self-getting nature by us. And in the Trinity is meeting the meditation of his own beloved son, his word. And then through the word, 
cooperates the word let there be let there be come the come the further ones the further sons 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 who also cooperate their word and his it is the only means his manifestation he has to uh, re-manifest himself by person forms and so when his own son as we saw in the previous session when his own son in a sense laid aside his deity and became son of man and you very rarely would would say son of God because he wanted to point the point he's son of man he's one of you when challenged of course he did say in fact he died because he said he's son of God but he loved to say he's son of man uh, and as son of man he said now this is what man is how do I do mighty things they, they, they said to him you, you do mighty things how, oh I do the thing I do what I father my, what I see my father do I don't say a thing I say what I hear my father say what do you mean what do you mean well, of course, externally, you couldn't understand. At that day, internal hadn't come, because the Spirit hadn't come. Of course, a few through history knew, but only after Pentecost did the Spirit come in a universal sense for those who receive him. So he couldn't use spiritual terms too much. But right at the, at the, at the, at the summer table where he was going to leave them, when he was going to rise and then come again in the Spirit, and that's the chapter where he said the Holy Spirit's going to come with you. Then when he said, oh, he said, you've got it all wrong. He said, you think the Father, as the sense of which he is up there, that's not the point. They said, sure, the Father, if you see me, you see the Father, because the Son uh, operates, he's really being operated. He functions, he's, he's managed, he's really being managed. I appear to manage my life. I appear to say so and so. I am the Lamb, I am the way, I am the truth. But really, I'm expressing him. I'm just a means, a means by which he expresses himself. If you see me, you see the Father. I don't do things by myself, I do what I see the Father doing. I don't speak words by myself, I speak what the Father saying. So here's the pattern man. And therefore, if that's a pattern man, you can't be a satisfied man unless you are, you're part of the pattern. And the pattern means, therefore, that you are as conscious as he is, you are not you. You're the living deity. John says he's God worthy. Paul says Christ worthy. And how do you see it? If, if we love one another, God is dwelling in us, and it's not the perfect in us. So our loving is God loving. Isn't that wrong? Don't look up there for it. If you are loving one another, that is God dwelling in you, and it's our perfectly. So if the humans are God we expressed. God we expressed. It's wrong, isn't it? Therefore, because that's what humans are made for, to co contain deity and remember human is consciousness, humanity is consciousness, your flesh is beautiful as, a, as an agent. My soul, my reasons, my beautiful, my bo my emotions, beautiful, my body activity is beautiful. That's so how God comes out. They're my agencies. Uh, I am spirit within. He fathered my spirit. He created my soul and body. Father my spirit in Hebrew 12. He fathered my spirit, like his spirit. So spirit is knowing. And when you know, you always live by knowing. You never did a thing which doesn't come from inside. Everything you ever did came because you know something, you desire it and choose it. I told you that last often. You came here this evening because you know you can come. You desire to come. I'll choose. That's inside you. Outside you, your car, your feet bring you here, your body is here. But it's bringing you here. The in you, the real you is you. So a you is a knower. Paul makes that quite plain. He says, what man knows the things of a man, then the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, in the spirit of God knows the things of God. Spirit is knower. So you're only... You're only competent where you know. I told you that this morning. Again, I keep perhaps repeating good many things. Uh, that in, in your profession, you're competent when you know it. It may take you five years to be trained as this, or trained as that, or trained as the other. The kind comes and gets you. And you know it. Now you live not by being trained. Oh, I know that. It's inside me now. I operate what I know. I operate what has got hold of me. I operate it. I, op I, I, I teach my, my, my lesson, my, my subject. I, do my nursing, I do my uh, engineering, I do whatever it is. So you live by knowing. And that's why a competent person is happy. He likes to do his stuff, he knows it. So knowing is, uh, life is competent, because uh, is, is a happy competence because you know a thing. Now we're in the new knowing. And the new knowing, of course, as I said before, I take it for granted, you'll say you're born again. If you Jesus said you're only born again if you see the kingdom. Except maybe born in the city, you can't see it. So it can't be these eyes, all we can see these kingdoms. It's, of course, the kingdom. So, I mean, you come to a knowing. What's your knowing? By your faith, 
this time it's due to a substance of speed. The old trade produces by faith you take the food, the experience, or this and that. But by, by the, uh, lifting the faith up to the spirit level, by faith in the risen Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes back and says, yes, yes, here he is. And uh, he's, he's, he's your savior, so you know. So we don't know the real person is the Lord Jesus Christ. The real person is the Heavenly Father. The real person is the Holy Spirit. And the company of heaven, so half our dear ones are gone there already, and the angels, this is real. And you, this fades out, and the other becomes real. And Paul says, well, we look not at the things we have seen, but the things that are not seen. Things are seen. Well, the science says they're so intemperate. There's a bunch of atoms floating, shouting and rushing about. They change, change shape every now and then. That's all matter is. Changing shape, that's all. It comes and goes, it doesn't matter. Things are seen temple. We're not seen. We're not seen. We belong to the Things are seen. Things are not seen eternally. We're part of that. And uh, uh, now, what my point is, you'll come at home and you know it. And you know it somehow. I don't know how you know it. It's a new one. Jesus is the Savior. I don't know how I know. I do know. And he, he's my Lord, he loves me, I love him, and God's my Father, and heaven's my home, and I've got the force of God. You're in the, the, the front of a new knowing, the confidence of a new knowing. You start your life by the fear of the Lord, you end it by the fun of the Lord, which is much less than the fear of the Lord. You're enjoying the Lord. Now, as I say, that's, but now, that has, it's difficult, because it, it, it hasn't worked too well. It has worked, but there's so many, uh, the past is out, your sins. The future is assured, your present is much more uncertain. And you aren't so consistent in the present as you were in the past and the future. But this life is to be as equally consistent. And that's, that's, why, that's what we're talking about now, how we find this consistency equally. Now the consistency is when you know your knowing isn't a relationship, but a union. A relationship isn't a union. And so you start in your, uh, actually you read it today in those three levels. Little children, young men and fathers. We're talking today the young man's faith, when you come strong. Maybe tomorrow we'll talk about prayer of faith, and intercession, if we get so far, we'll be on the father's faith. Uh, the young man says, you come strong, you have word of God by union. This is the, uh, the union one. The, the babyhood one, you know the father outside. You trust like a baby, you trust that Jesus died for you, you trust your sins of God. You don't know him inside. A little bit, because it does, it meant, it, it, it really is, but you don't in large way inside. It's more your relationship outside. Relationship is union. You, oh, I know inside. You is well, yes, I am I, but I'm not really. I have a bigger eye inside me now. I am I, but that's a detail. I'm a little eye. That's a big eye. The living God. And I'm act as God Himself dwells in you. There's something dwelling in permanence. That's Jesus Christ dwells in you. Jesus Christ. And the Spirit who makes the will dwells in you. We've got some permanent residence, haven't we? Oh dear. But there's no good you don't know it. There's no you said, I hope it is, or it might be today, it isn't tomorrow. And dwelling is permanently. Dwelling isn't visiting. Oh, that's a, that's a, whatever. If I'm in hell, that makes no difference. That, that's it. He, he's me now. The, the real he is the real me. I'm a me. But I'm a very minor me. Yet I operate, I operate, I'm a real person, I operate, I, op I, I, I work, I do it. But uh, all I do, the real, that, that doing isn't the real, the real person is the doer inside who causes me to do it. I've always liked that statement of Ezekiel. Uh, when they say, um, isn't, it, isn't it dangerous just to be, to walk free because God runs you? I said, hey, uh, Ezekiel, who knew a thing or two, <laughs> said this. He said, I'll put my speak with you, I'll cause you to walk in my way. So I don't why, I just had to walk it for me. He causes me to walk, so I find more fun. I don't try to walk, I can't help it for me. Wriggle and squeal and run away every now and then, but I still walk it. You're caused to walk it. You know, it's because you're on the strong, and you were caused to walk for Satan, all right. You were very good self, self-loving self, I assure you. You were excellent, uh, you were expert at self-loving self. Satan calls you to walk for self-loving self. You're pretty good at it, so was I. Now you're pretty good at the other one now. Don't say you're not. Be positive. Walking his word. Uh, but now, what I mean is, you walk by your familiarity. You, you practice carpentry because you know carpentry. You practice medicine because you know medicine. You practice because you know it. And you operate what you know. It, it's part of you. Now, you practice Christ when you know him. Now, you know him as a savior. To that extent, you've got to practice it. You practice the sin is forgiven, and he's your savior, and you are a changed person. You're a new creature. But you may not practice it fully because you... you <laughs> You've, you've had this inner problem of what about my weaknesses and failures? And you haven't 
come to know that not only are you wretched, you really, you're he. The real he in you is you. He, he, he is your there, but the real he. And how are you know it? Now, that's this new one. Now, we spent our afternoon saying, uh, to get that right, you've got to get your humanity out of its, out of its, its misconception. See, our humanity is simply the agency for God. It isn't a nature. Humanity is a magnificent capacity, something like, like, something like a computer, only more so, magnificent capacities, mental, relational, psychological, magnificent. Look what produces the mind, about from the attitude of the man. Uh, but the, uh, your, your nature is, is, is a quality. What type of person? Uh, what type of, is it for selfish? What's it for? Why do you do these things? Not what you do. Why do you do them? That's not you. That's not you. And it isn't you. And we deceive, I, I, I therefore told you how the Bible explained to us, uh, use all those symbols, that we're always a container. You're a vessel. A vessel isn't the coffee in it. You don't say what's the nature of the vessel. You say what's the nature of the liquid. Is it, is it bad liquid or good liquid? Is it the best of wrath, the best of mercy? Is it bad liquid like wrath? Is it good liquid like, 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 uh, like uh, mercy, Jesus? That's what doesn't matter. You're a branch. It doesn't matter about the branch. It's which tree is coming through it. Is it uh, a, a branch of the vine, expressing vine? Is it the true vine or the false vine? It's a temple. As I say, we proud people make too much of the temple. It doesn't matter what the building is like. It's who comes out of it. Is God made with there or is it the temple of Satan they have today? Which is it? So don't get it. It isn't this. This is as beautiful as an agency. It isn't it. It's, it is a self. We're more than a temple. We're more than a branch. We're a person. That makes it difficult. We are up, but even we operate.